Welcome back to Go on Shaw TV. We are at the Royal Aviation Museum of Western Canada, standing in front of the Viscount. This is what passenger travel looked like in the early 1950s to the 1970s. Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah, this plane was built in the 1950s in England, and uh, Canada was uh, the first country in North America to adopt these, uh, these first jet-powered passenger planes, the, the Vickers Viscount. Now throughout the month of April, you guys have a new tour. It's called the uh, Early Stages of Passenger Travel in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, we were talking a little bit earlier off camera, it's hard to define passenger travel because when I think of passenger travel, this is honestly what I think of, but um, there's also bush planes and so many other options that it's, it's hard to define, right? Yeah, I mean, nowadays we think, uh, obviously we think of passenger planes like this, but uh, before the 1950s, planes like this simply didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so uh, most passengers would have been traveling traveling in smaller types of aircraft and as far back as the 1920s and 30s would have been going around in small bush planes. And on the tours, people will get a chance to go into the plane. Um, what are some major differences they'll see in an aircraft like this, uh, opposed to something that you fly on today? Well, one of the big differences here is that this is a luxury airliner. It was considered a, um, a first-class airplane back then. Because this was the first jet-powered passenger plane in the world, uh, they were really looking to attract a, a new kind of clientele, take some clientele away from the, uh, the train. So uh, the, there's a lot of room for the passengers in there, and they've even got a galley in the back where they prepared food. Uh, mm -hmm. They even had a menu on board, and you could choose what you wanted to eat. Interesting. I was actually reading about that earlier. Um, I, like It was just way different. People traveled on planes wearing the fanciest clothing and eating gourmet meals, whereas now um, like I prefer to travel in you know running shoes and <laughs> it just casual, but it was really a big thing, a big deal for people. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, people at, at that time, travel was, of course, it was a big deal mm -hmm. because uh, it was more of an expense at that time, but it was also an expense of time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, nowadays it's easy to get around. There's planes flying around all the time but uh, back then to get a ticket on a on a jet powered plane be one of the first people in the Americas in in the world to fly on one of these things was quite a quite a big deal hmm. and what other kind of planes will people see on this tour that you guys are offering well most of the planes in our museum are bush planes so we'll we'll see some of the smaller planes and we'll, we'll talk a bit about how people got around before we had uh, these kinds of huge airplanes and can I ask, um, you know, on a plane like this, flying out of Winnipeg, where was the most popular destination back in the 1950s? Oh, that's hard to say. But <laughs> yeah. back in the 50s, uh, we're talking internationally, uh, we weren't quite flying over the Pacific yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, the m probably most popular would have been going over the Atlantic into Europe, places like Paris and London and Rome. Uh, for the first time in the 1950s, these places would have been r really easy to get to for the average person. Well, thank you so much, David. Later yeah. on in the show, we're actually going to be talking about this museum itself because uh, it used to be a travel hub and uh, the busiest in Canada. So we're going to be talking about that later on the show. So stick with us here on Go.